I'm going to do a quick review, because a few people have asked for them, um, of the uh, live action short films that were nominated for the best, best live action short Oscar this year. You can still catch them as a sort of package of five films at various sort of art house repertory cinemas if you've gone near you. You may well know that we obviously we make TV programs, we make we run a production company, but we also I make um, short films too. We're working on a short film at the moment called The Gangbuster, and we've got a couple of others in development. The idea behind short films, for those of you who who perhaps wonder what the point of them is, there's a whole industry of festivals that are populated by short films, and the short film is is a little bit like a calling card, but that can happen at varying levels of sort of finance. You know, you can have quite significantly funded and supported shorts, you can have self-financed shorts. The point of making short films is, as I say, as a calling card, and it can often take two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight short films by a particular director. Uh, or group of filmmakers before you know one of them really captures the imagination and then your hope is is that you'll then move on to making features so it's a very speculative process but it's also an intensely creative process which means that you can experiment and you're not sort of privy to all of the pressures of producers and what have you so it's you know it's quite a craft as a craft it's like the equivalent of if you read a book it's like reading a short story you know in microcosm you've got a be across all of those nuanced ways of telling a story, characterization, having maybe a stylistic edge to it that's kind of unique, doing something, saying something that's, that, that's clever. Now, all of these things sound very simple to do, but believe me, when you start to commit to making a short film, it requires all the same effort, thought, consideration, and preparation. Now, if you get into a certain type of festival, a BAFTA accredited festival or an Oscar accredited festival, then your short film stands a chance of being sort of lifted up a peg or two and potentially becoming recognized by BAFTA in the, in the UK or by the Academy in America yeah. um, and being nudged forward as a possible nominee or a long list on a long list for the, the short films for either BAFTA BAFTAs or, or Oscars. This year, there were five films. I tell you what, a big theme that kind of threaded through a lot of these films was the idea of stories told through the perspective and lens of young children, or specifically young boys. The British, well, it's not British actually, it's an Irish film uh, funded by Ireland, but I think it has some British money in it, is Detainment, which is the story or the retelling and the reconstruction of the aftermath of the James Bulger case. Now, I think I mentioned on one of our Oscar review night films, I, I, I was deeply uncomfortable with this. I heard the story, I didn't have a knee-jerk reaction like, oh, you just shouldn't do this. I understand that the, the, the parents and family of James Bulger have been very, very unhappy about this. But I'm sort of coming at it from a sort of slightly different level. There's, there's the human level of, of the emotions involved with those people who are actually involved in it and who actually sadly lost their son. Then there's the case of the two boys who, you know, as we know, um, their identities have been changed and there's all, all sorts of heated debate around what should happen and will happen to them. Um, but I don't know, I just felt deeply uncomfortable about this film. In terms of how it was made, I thought it was an incredibly standard film and I think that if it wasn't for the subject matter and it wasn't for the fact that a number of people will have been looking at this film from outside the UK, um, I don't think it really deserves to be in there. It was a sort of reasonable, almost, if you take away the intensity of the real story, just a very sort of standard, averagely made film about uh, the, uh, an awful crime. And you know, it, it, doesn't do, it doesn't do anything spectacularly different. It doesn't bring anything new to the debate. And so consequently, as I came out of it, I just, I was left feeling like the filmmaker had been slightly exploitative with the subject matter. Now, he's totally entitled to make the film. I'm not of the opinion that he shouldn't have made the film, but I just thought it was a sort of, I thought it was a lazy, sensational choice to pop into the five short films. Obviously, it tried to sort of humanize in a sense or, or, or sort of throw a spotlight over the complexities of two boys lying and panicking and lying by you know it's not often that i feel so uncomfortable watching something i just couldn't help but keep thinking mm, i can't why am i getting any dramatic reward from this i don't want to get any dramatic reward from this and i didn't actually think it was very well made but one film that i thought was really quite quite compelling was a film called fauve and this was a french canadian production and it was about two boys who were playing in a landscape of mountains but one of those i guess you'd call it a sort of quarry like a cement quarry and they're sort of throwing stones, there are a couple of scallywags, I think every young boy would relate to them playing on, I used to play on building sites as a boy and used to do all sorts of things that when you look back 
you think, oh my God, there but for the grace of God go I that I didn't fall down that hole or that piece of thing didn't fall on my head. And these two boys are literally getting over their heads because as they're playing and running around in this beautifully shot landscape actually, and it's quite an impersonal, blighted, very gray, very white. And the cinematographer really translates that sort of landscape of mining mountains and slag heaps and cement sort of piles. He really made that look quite beautiful. And then in the middle of it, one of the boys gets stuck in what essentially is quicksand, but it's sort of cement. One gets in, he gets out. It was a very unsensational and interestingly, a very quiet film about something absolutely awful and catastrophic that can happen within seconds and how an entire innocence of childhood can be lost within a, within a smidgen. And in that sense, it's not entirely dissimilar to Detainment, the film about James Bolger, because you're looking at a moment within a couple of boys' lives where they're facing death. They're facing the meaning of life and the meaning of death. Obviously in this film, Faux, one of the boys is facing death. I won't ruin it because of course uh, you might see it. I thought it was a very understated and yet intensely dramatic and very clever and very subtle and very artistic portrayal of a boy as he realizes he's literally gone in far too deep to a situation that neither of them thought could have overwhelmed them given their, the silliness of their play and what have you. There was one film in there which I couldn't help but think about my mum. My mum's gay and uh, this was a film called Marguerite and it was just a quiet domestic drama about a terminally ill woman who realises that the female carer that she's got is actually a lesbian. And it's very quiet, it's very subtle, it's a very simple little film. You know, it was fascinated with the generational divide and, and, and the woman comes in and she cares for her sort of, you know, she's got bed sores and she's got she's got aches and pains and she's, you know, she's ne near the end of her life, This this old woman you know she looks on her carer's phone and realizes that you know she's having a sort of relationship with a woman and there's a very sweet moment where she asks her what's it like to sleep with a woman or, or be with a woman and then there's a moment where the carer towards the end of the film curls up alongside the older terminally ill woman and it's a very tender moment I mean it's a very sweet film but ultimately I thought it lacked grist I thought it lacked any you know, it depended on sort of long years of people, of each of them looking at each other. I didn't feel any particular relationship with the older woman. You know, it was a kind of purposeless portrait, really, I felt. Um, and it raised more sort of awkward questions than one would want from something that you wanted to be quite tender. So when she, when the, when the younger lady actually lay in bed with her, I felt uncomfortable about it in some way, I don't know. It, it was nicely shot, not, not sensationally shot. Nicely performed, but again, very under underplayed sort of performances. But it wasn't particularly dramatic. Now, my two favourite films in the in the selection is Skin, which uh, is the one that won the uh, the Academy Award, and and Mother, which was a Spanish film. Now, I'm going to start with Skin. Skin, I thought, was an incredibly original film. I am going to give away what happens in the film, so if you see it. Uh, they kind of gave it away at the Oscars when they showed a clip of uh, the sort of end shot of the film. But this is about a sort of neo-Nazi, deep south, I guess, uh, American white family. And they're, you know, shooting guns and their latent racism, fascism. They have swastikas all over them. They're a sort of hardcore family you wouldn't want to meet on a dark night, certainly not if you were black. And what happens is a scene develops in a supermarket where a black guy at another uh, check-in ch uh, sort of very friend in a friendly manner sort of waves at the boy and he proceeds to get beaten up by the young boy of the neo-Nazis family's uh, extended family. All the neo-Nazis beat him up in the, in the car park. And it's a very traumatic scene of, of abuse and violence and extremely, you know, whenever you see something like that, you, you need to work out, what am I watching here? Is what's making, what is what's making this film stand out just simply the drama of this this awful violence or is something very clever going to be done with this and something more something clever was done with it there was a purpose to it because this is a revenge film and the revenge comes in a very curious way the white head of the neo-nazi family the father of the boy the young boy and what's interesting what i liked about the young boy and again this is another film with a young boy in it is the young white boy the the, the child of the neo-nazi family was look you could see him not seeing color in the same way that the rest of his family was because he was smiling at the black guy before he got be the black guy got beaten up what happens is if the, the this boy's father is kidnapped in revenge and he's bundled into a van and he's taken off to a garage in another neighborhood. They lift up the garage and then you have this long protracted sequence of lots and lots of shots of extreme close-ups, beautifully shot, I have to say, absolutely stunningly shot, such macro close-ups, you wonder how the hell they did it. 
over tattoos being applied or ink being applied to skin. You can see them filling out uh, swastikas on his skin and what have you. And then a very neat conceit develops where effectively they've tattooed this white neo-Nazi redneck entirely black. And then he goes back to his, he's dumped in his back in his neighborhood and he goes back to his neo-Nazi family and tries to knock on the door, wants to get back in. And I'm not gonna ruin what happens at the end actually, because that is something that you could check out, go and see it. It's a, it's a clever little film. Now, I thought this was really clever. And I, I, this is a weird one, this, because I thought, I was fully expecting the filmmakers to be black and they weren't. And I don't know why, but that made me, when I discovered that, when they won the Oscar and they went up on stage and I saw that they were white, not that, you know, you can't make a film about these issues. My film, The Gangbusters, is actually about uh, a white boy and a black boy and how one of them sees skin difference and one doesn't. But, um, and that was my experience as a child growing up with principally black friends. Uh, but I was kind of thrown and it's kind of retrospectively made me I don't know why, I don't know why I should feel that, but it's kind of retrospectively made me think, oh. But it, you know, it's a very clever film. It's a clever film about what is skin color? What, how do we make these judgments? How arbitrary is it that we make enormous judgments and change our opinions on people based on skin color? It also tickled out the thing that I hope my short film looks at, which is this idea that in the, through the eyes of a child, difference is never seen so keenly. You know, you don't feel always marked as different. You know, there's a sort of innocence in childhood, isn't there? So that was the one that won, but the one that I would have liked to win is the film Mother, Madre, Spanish film. And this film is virtually a one take shot in a very swish, you know, nice sort of apartment somewhere in Spain. And there's a mother and there's her mother. So essentially there's the mother and grandmother of a child who rings on the phone, rings her mobile, and says that they he is, he is on a beach, obviously, has access to his father because the, the mum and dad have split up. He's on a beach, but he can't see his father. His father's disappeared. And the film does nothing other than spiral and constrict the stress of this mother in this flat on the phone, virtually in one take. And this is what I loved about it. It was a, a sort of steady cam, very slow steady cam shot that was moving around. There were a couple of edits, but it might have been, my only criticism was it would have been nice if it was one continuous shot. And she takes these phone calls, but then of course his battery starts to die on the beach on his mobile. Uh, so she hangs up and then he rings the landline. And then this terrible thing develops where he starts to say that he can see a man on the beach and the man on the beach is going for a wee and then the man on the beach is coming towards him. And then the man on the beach, and this story just develops and then she tries to ask him, well, what beach are you on? What's the ID? And again, I'm not gonna give away the ending of the film, but this film, because I'm a parent, I think was the most frightening and sort of chilling of all of them because the, the lead actress played it so brilliantly. This spiraling sense of fear and unease and drama just completely begins to overwhelm her. And you're taken along. And again, it's like the best of Hitchcock films and things like that. All the dramas ha happening off screen were contained within a flat. And then you've got the mother of the mother going through her own transitional realization of how awful things are. And so this becomes this, this sort of pristine white flat becomes a sort of nightmare space. And for me, it was the film that most got under my skin. All of these films were about ch children, indirectly or directly, and children facing life and death moments. And I just thought it was, I thought it was an incredibly clever and innovative film. And I'd like to think that if Skin hadn't won, Mother was absolutely the next contender. If you get to check them out, do check them out. I'm sure they'll come up online somewhere. I think you can buy them on Apple TV. Check them out and I'd love for you to feed back. What, which is your favorite? Which do you prefer? Did you think they worked? For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.